Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Uh, are they gonna bury it? By the thumbnail, it looked like it, it was a tunnel. Uh, preemptive light, guys. How are you? Good. Great. I hope. Uh, Finland might have solved nuclear power's biggest problem. I love learning about this stuff. I definitely don't understand the, the science behind it, but civil engineering projects and, and the videos on YouTube, I, I am a little bit obsessed. It's an immense project. Since 2005, Finland's been constructing the largest nuclear reactor in Europe alongside a facility that could solve the problem of what to do with spent nuclear fuel. When you think nuclear, the Nordic nation doesn't immediately jump to mind, but if all of its planned projects come to fruition, then by the end of the decade, the country will be second only to France in terms of the percentage of energy drawn from nuclear systems. After more than a decade of US delays say, and cost wonder. overruns, 2022 will see the world's happiest country switch on one of the planet's most advanced reactors, potentially kickstarting a new age of nuclear power. Finland actually has a long history with nuclear power. Its first reactor came online in 1977, and by 1980, three more were operational, providing a third of Finland's total energy needs. While these reactors are among the most efficient in the world, running at a 95% capacity factor for the past decade and continually being uprated over their life cycle, growing demand and the seasonal fluctuations of other renewable sources like hydro and solar has left the country relying on imports from Russia and Sweden to make up the balance of its energy needs. To lessen its reliance on foreign energy and help meet its goal of carbon neutrality by 2035, the Finnish government approved the construction of what was meant to be the world's first third-generation pressurized water reactor, or ERP, at its Olkiloto nuclear plant known as OL3 in 2005. With an initial cost of 3.9 billion US dollars, OL3 was to nearly double the plant's existing output and provide 14% of Finland's energy needs when it became operational by 2010. But while OL3 was the first... I'd be sort of interested to see where that... where the cost comes from within the power plant. Like, is the nuclear fuel itself a lot of money or is it just all the all the high-tech equipment around it that i just wonder like out of that money what is the most expensive part of a, of a of creating a, a nuclear um power plant when it became operational by 2010 but while ol3 was the first epr to begin construction ahead of other next generation reactors in france china and the uk Complexities surrounding the design, defects in safety systems, and contractual disputes led to over a decade of delays. And in 2018, China's Taishan-1 became the first EPR reactor in the world to start operating. Despite these delays and the cost swelling to over 10.2 billion US dollars, OL3 was granted an operation license by Finland's Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority in 2019. And in March 2021, 116 tons of uranium began to be loaded into the reactor ahead of its final testing phase. Once it's connected to the grid and the reactor begins commercial production in early 2022, the countdown will be on until OL3 begins adding to Finland's spent fuel stockpile. Nuclear power is an incredibly clean way to produce energy, but it does create a byproduct, and it's the one problem we've yet to truly solve. After three to six years, a radiated material is no longer able to sustain a reaction as a viable fuel source, and new material must be brought in to maintain the reactor's efficiency. But while it's unable to generate electricity, spent fuel remains highly radioactive and needs to be isolated for hundreds of thousands of years to prevent it causing harm to people or the... Hundreds of thousands of years. Um, I remember when um, I remember watching a video on Chernobyl, and there's this thing called the elephant foot, or something that, it's like a, like when the reactor, whatever you want to, you know, it failed, or, or whatever you want to call it, I'm no expert on Chernobyl, but 
a byproduct of, of the fuel was like burning beneath the concrete and then finally set, but it, it, it won't be safe to be around for a, an insane amount of time. I don't know about a hundred thousand years that that's unimaginably long it for hundreds of thousands of years to prevent it causing harm to people not even one hundred thousand although spent fuel can be re-enriched and re-enter the fuel cycle the main way we currently deal with radioactive waste is to simply store it in pools or sealed dry storage facilities while it slowly decays while these methods keep spent fuel contained, it's not a viable long-term solution as the system is heavily reliant on mechanical and human intervention, and even under the strictest conditions, it can be vulnerable to attacks of terrorism or natural disasters, the kind that led to the events at Fukushima in 2011. With an estimated 250,000 tonnes of high-level waste already in storage around the world, and with no long-term strategy of dealing with it, many countries have chosen to completely rule out nuclear power when it comes to meeting their growing energy needs. In an attempt to solve this, since 2005, Posiva, a joint venture between Finland's two nuclear power providers, has been constructing the world's first deep geological repository for spent fuel in the billion-year-old bedrock not far from OL3. Funded by charges collected from consumers through electricity sales... So in a 100,000-year uh, time frame, they said uh, like a billion year old bedrock um obviously you 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 have to think about tectonic movements in that time period or not be in a like uh, how would like could you do this in a place like japan or chile or or something like that or california where there are earthquakes but when you have to think about 100,000 years then you don't you have to like think about is this all going to be like you know uh, uh, you know, the one I don't know, funded I by charges collected from consumers through electricity sales, the one billion US dollar project that's due to complete in 2023 will see a series of tunnels extend half a kilometer below ground, creating a permanent disposal facility for spent fuel. Now, while burying nuclear waste might sound alarming and may cause concern to environmental groups, the process at Onkelo is so much more than simply burying the problem. Based on a Swedish disposal method known as KBS-3, irradiated material is placed into boron steel canisters and enclosed within corrosion-resistant copper capsules before being buried in individual holes and backfilled with bentonite clay, entombing it forever. Once buried, no further mechanical or human intervention is required to contain the radioactive payload, essentially eliminating one of the biggest barriers many countries have when it comes to adopting nuclear power. With the capacity to accommodate the last 50 years' worth of Finland's accumulated spent fuel and the needs of its existing reactors until at least 2120, at which time the facility will be permanently sealed, Onkelo appears to provide a viable long-term solution to dealing with nuclear waste. Described as a game-changer for the industry by the director of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the lessons learned at Onkelo are being shared with other countries, and regions with suitable geological characteristics are being considered for similar disposal sites. Having seemingly solved the biggest drawback of nuclear power, and with a sixth reactor already planned to begin construction next year, Finland looks set to play a leading role in the widespread adoption of nuclear technology as the world continues to transition away from fossil fuels. This video was powered by Bluebeam. You can learn more about that at the link below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive Good video, video channel for, sure. for construction, make sure you subscribe to the B1M. Um, oh my God, what was I going to say? This is why I don't... Oh yeah, uh, e even if they end up having to kind of scrap or or change it a bit, a at least they're starting to do this. And so, if anything, you're going to get some practice or knowledge about nuclear storage just by tr just by simply working on it, right? And so, that's the knowledge of doing that is valuable in itself. Even if there's a better way, it, it could lead to a better way of of you know storing this stuff, but. Also, they said that it can be turned back in to an enriched nuclear fuel, right? So I guess they, 
really cool video. I obviously don't understand uh, the more scientific things, but I, it doesn't stop me from trying to learn about it. I think it's fascinating. Good on you, Finland. And uh, yeah, really cool video. Hope you guys are all doing well. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.